Hi guys, this is Sam and welcome to Inglogic. Today's pronunciation video is the third instalment of how to pronounce the letter T in English. Here you can find the first video on the rules on how and when to pronounce T versus the glottal stop. This is the second video on how the choice between these two sounds can affect your accent. And today we will explore different ways to pronounce the letter T. So please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel and let's get started. As we've seen in my other videos, the combination of the letter T and vowel should result into a T. Water, bottle, better, butter. But sometimes in a couple of words we get a little bit lazy and we Americanize this t into a d. This is an informal style and not standard English, be careful. But we definitely do it a lot with the word better, which we transform into better. Sometimes you might hear it with bottle, which becomes bottle, and Maybe you can also hear water instead of water, but better is definitely the one that we use as better the most. We often use this uh, Americanization in a couple of very common constructions. Instead of saying about it, where you would have to keep the t in about because it's followed by a vowel, it's very common for us to say about it. And I use a lot but again, instead of saying but again, I wouldn't really say about it, but I definitely say but again. But in all other words, if we want to be a little bit lazy, we use just a glottal stop. We wouldn't use this Americanization. Kettle wouldn't become kettle, it would just become kettle. In my previous video, I told you that when the letter T is followed by a consonant, we use a glottal stop. Inside a word, atmosphere, football outcome and between words that girl that boy and this is true but today i want to expand on that a little bit more and i want to focus on connected speech so when we have more than one word together so that girl becomes that girl as you will have noticed um, the glottal stop that i'm giving you in these examples is always preceded by a vowel that girl that boy and the rule goes that when we have a vowel plus t plus a consonant, we do use a glottal stop, regardless of what consonant that is. So we say, that girl, that boy, get them. But when we have the combination consonant plus t plus another consonant, we don't use t. We don't use a glottal stop, we completely drop the sound through a process called elision. So best dessert becomes best dessert. Fast car, next door, my left leg, he slept very little. And this also happens when the second consonant is a t sound, first time. And now we can see that when I say taste card, this is why I've stopped writing the letter T, but I have started using the T sound instead, because taste ends on an E as a letter, but it's silent, so the last sound is still a T. And the same process applies here. Taste card becomes taste card, where the T sound disappears. Specifically, when we have the combination consonant plus t plus h, usually given by an h, um, we actually prefer using the t in this case. We would never really say left-handed, we'd say left-handed. My first house. You can say my first house, but that's very, very lazy, but definitely we keep the t in left-handed. With h, we keep even if it's presided by a vowel. She hurt him, he hurt her, I taught happily. In the sentence, it hurt heavily, we have two cases of t and h. Now, the second one, we definitely use the t, so hurt heavily. And I would say, however, that it plus an h sound is the only case where we often use a glottal stop instead of pronouncing the t. We can't drop it completely, so we can't say it hurt, but we do sometimes say it hurt heavily. 
Usually when we have the combination vowel plus l plus t plus a consonant, instead of removing t completely, we use a glottal stop. Salt water, it felt strange. You can remove it, but it's very common to use a glottal stop there. Some books and teachers will tell you that we also glottalize t when we have the combination of vowel plus n plus t plus consonant. So in the sentence, I went to school, we should glottalize the t in went and say, I went to school. Now, I think something slightly different happens. I think that in this case, we completely remove it. I went to school. I won three apples. I won six apples. And I think that happens because the sound after the t is voiceless. So th, s and t are voiceless. And why is that important? Voiceless sounds keep the sounds before them shorter. So if I say I want, this t in want keeps the o uh fairly short. And if we completely remove it and then put another voiceless sound like s from six, this s plays exactly the same role. So it keeps the o uh from want short. I want six apples. But I do agree that in this combination, we tend to glottalize t if it's followed by a voiced sound, because voiced sounds don't shorten the sounds before them. I want Gary. I want Vivian. In informal lazy English, when we have NT plus a vowel, we can simply remove the t altogether. So I went in, I went out, I want in, I want out. It's now time to talk about assimilation, which is when words are put together and they create a completely different sound. When the first word ends on a t sound and the following one starts with the y sound, we don't say t y, but we say ch. I'm thinking about you. We have about ending on a t and you starting with the y. So when we put them together, we don't say about a you, we say about you. The sentence is, I'm thinking about you. And as you can see, I'm using the weak form for you because that's how we would speak it in this sentence. I don't understand what your question is. We have what ending on it and y starting with the y. So we say, Watcher, I don't understand what your question is. Next plus year gives you, I'll see you next year. Now, instead of using this assimilation and this ch sound, we can also use the glottal stop, which is sometimes considered to be a little bit more sophisticated than um, assimilation. So instead of saying, I'm thinking about you, you can say, I'm thinking about you. And I don't understand what your question is, which is, to be fair, what I personally prefer saying. But you can use assimilation if you want to. But specifically with the word year, it gets a little bit tricky because nobody would ever put a glottal stop in next year. Nobody would say next year. We all say, even I, next year. But if I ask a question like, what year are you on? I wouldn't say what year. I would definitely say, what year are you on? And I think that's what most people would also say. Last but not least, when ed as the past form of a verb is pronounced as t, it follows exactly the same rules that we've explored today. I talked to him yesterday. We have k t plus another consonant, so the first t disappears completely. I talked to him yesterday. And unfortunately, that means that if I say I talk to him, every day. That sounds exactly the same as I talked to him yesterday. So we only understand from the context what we're talking about. And that's it for today. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel down below. And do let me know in the comments if you'd ever noticed any of these little tricks that we use in pronunciation regarding the letter T and the sound T. I will see you next Thursday and Monday with my quick vocabulary videos and next Tuesday with my next explanation one.